What up guys, Mythic Fire here. That's like the best early 2000s introduction you could possibly have. Anyway, thanks for clicking on this video. Today, I thought I'd do something a little bit different. Um, as you guys might know, I'm a guitarist as well as an artist and writer. And uh, I've got the almighty journal of power here in my hand. Um, and I thought I'd do a fun little video talking about uh, guitar stuff. I'm like, I was thinking about my own journey reflecting over a bowl of blueberry Cheerios, which by the way, if you haven't had them, chef's kiss, they are amazing. Uh, so I have a couple things I want to talk about to kind of help people along on their own guitar playing journey, because I'm still on mine and uh, I'm still a student as well. So if there's anything I can do to help uh, anybody else, I'd be more than happy to do that. So uh, what can you do to get better guitar? Well, there are many things, and that's a very multifaceted question, of course. Um, now, it, the, one of the biggest things as a teacher, my, my years of teaching people privately and within institutions, is that it's awfully hard to uh, compress a lifetime's continu continuing journey into a 30 minute or an hour long lesson. Uh, it's very, very difficult uh, because you can, like all the old adage, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make a drink kind of thing. So that's kind of a tricky thing there. So remember, we're all work in progress. Uh, we're all a work in progress, I should say. And the first thing I want to start off with is, of course, fundamentals. So fundamentals, I'm often referring to uh, technique, um, you know, the technical side of playing guitar. You know, doing the one, two, three, four exercise up and across the fingerboard, all the way up and down, like this, and then back down from the twelfth fret down. Um, really building that finger independence and trying different finger combinations to a metronome and stuff like that. Uh, building up your technical skills. You know, playing with the tips of your fingers. Your first finger acts as a guide finger, and can be a little bit more flat against the the fretboard, just to kind of help you with legato uh, licks or ideas or anything like that. Um, and hammer-ons and pull-offs as well. And uh, also learning how to hold a pick is very important. A lot of people, I, I angle my pick slightly downward when I'm playing so that my pick glides through the strings as opposed to coming at a 90 degree angle with more resistance. So for faster passages, I come at it like this. <laughs> Look at me over here. <laughs> anyway, so um, you know, those are examples that you can find plenty of articles online. I have plenty of videos available here on my channel. Uh, they're really short little introductory lessons on like sweet picking, uh, depending on whatever level you're at, um, picking techniques, techniques in general, uh, exercises and things like that. Um, you know, uh, but there are plenty, there's plenty of stuff out there. So feel free to peruse some of that. So fundamentals are very important because once you have your fundamentals down, the world is your oyster. I mean, honestly, honest to God. Another thing I have written here is a good teacher. Find a good teacher. Um, I'm a classical guitarist as well. My first guitar instructor was also a classical musician in training. And so him and I would always play classical pieces together. Um, and he was a fantastic teacher. You know, he really challenged me a lot. He would put different music in front of me and I would have to sight read every single lesson and uh, and things like that and uh, always did had a fun time doing that and I'm really really grateful that he did that because you know uh, music is a universal language but it's a lot like reading reading you know when you're a young kid you read a lot of books until you get faster and faster that's the same thing with with uh, sight reading um, you know you need to find try your best to find a good teacher and now in the year 2022 I mean we have so many ways of um, you know, finding good instruction through online programs, through YouTube itself. I mean, heck, I, you know, I learned so much from YouTube. Um, but also, <laughs> you're going to laugh at this, the Guitar Hero games, the first three, at least, uh, were the whole reason why I got into guitar. And of course, then I discovered my favorite guitar guitarist of all time, uh, Randy Rhodes. Um, he's my favorite guitar player of all time, from the womb to the tomb, always. Um, but you know, any way you get into guitar is a good way, you know, and back then there was a lot of stigma around people who got into guitar because of Guitar Hero and stuff like that. People were jerks and some, some people in my high school were kind of jerks about that. But I mean, I was already in marching band and 
um, in band since fourth grade. So I already knew how to read music for a C instrument like the oboe and marimba and bell xylophone anyway. So all I had to do was just translate that knowledge to guitar. So if you have a head start like that, if you're, if you're already in band uh, now and you know how to read music, the guitar is a C instrument, meaning there's no transposition needed. Uh, what you see on the this, this sheet of music is what you play on the fingerboard. There's no transposition, no transposing or anything. Um, so don't listen to the haters, no matter how hard, no matter what gets you into guitar. As long as you're playing, hell yeah, we're happy to have you. So um, anyway, uh, oh, okay. So another thing I have written down here is improvisation. Now this is huge for me, everybody. Huge, huge. Um, because... I love improvisation. I, I personally feel that my skill level as a guitar player now, as of you know February 10th, 2022, my whole however long, 15 year long journey, however long it's been now, uh, can be equated to improvisation uh, as a big part of it. Because improv, it challenges you, it puts you in an uncomfortable situation. You're learning this new chord progression or backing track on the fly and just making stuff up as you go. And you start to develop your own musical voice, you start to develop your own musical tastes, and um, you know, so people can really identify you just based on a couple notes that you might play uh, because of the way that you play those few notes, you know, that nobody else would probably play them the same way. It's the same thing with artistic vision. No one's gonna paint the same tree the same way because we all see the world differently. And that's great, we need that stuff, you know? So improvisation, once you get comfortable enough with the fundamentals, I encourage you to go out there and find some jam tracks. Uh, my Line 6 Spider Jam 2.0 uh, over here, this amp is about 14 years old now, I think. It was my first real big amp purchase after my first starter amp. I've had that, that amplifier for so long. It's a real workhorse. Um, I added wheels to it at a time, at a time and some uh, cable racks on the sides, but I've since gotten rid of those because uh, it was just too cumbersome. And I wasn't... Uh, gigging as much anymore but anyway um what was i saying oh that amp comes with like 200 jam tracks and i wholeheartedly believe that those jam tracks really just took my skill level through the roof you know like honestly um and just the, like i mentioned before the ways that they would it would challenge me to think of new ideas uh, on the fly um, a lot of my music that i recorded on my soundcloud came from those tracks that i just sped up or slowed down or chopped them up and made new compositions out of those jam tracks and uh, so yeah I mean improv is so huge you know it's very relaxed um, I mean it's uncomfortable and meaning that you have to it's it's not you're not you never heard it before ideally um, you know the track so you're trying to think of something on the fly and stuff and that's really exciting that's where I live as a guitar player honestly personally uh, I live in the improv land. I love improvisation. Um, it, it, it's fun. It keeps guitar fresh. I get uh, you, you'll be surprised what comes out of your what comes out of you. You know when you're improving uh, over a jam track, you'll be like, "Whoa, that was a really cool idea. I didn't know I could play that. That was really cool. That was really nice. I got to remember that. Let me write that down real quick. Um, you know, or record that idea once you remember it, and you just record that, and it could be a new song based on that improv session." So to me, improvisation on guitar is a lot like when I'm sketching in a sketchbook or doing little thumbnails, you know, uh, working on an illustration. Um, so yeah, improv is great. I love it. Love it to death. It's good for you. It's like eating your vegetables as a guitar player. Uh, another thing I have written here is practical theory. So everybody is probably a little familiar with music theory. Um, and I love music theory. I honestly do. Uh, do I have a master's degree in music theory? Hell no. <laughs> do I know everything that there is about music theory? Hell no. Do I want to? Not really. It's not really necessary. Now, when I say practical theory here in my journal, what I mean is, um, you know, get your basics, advanced knowledge, you know, know your circle of fifths, um, you know, which includes your uh, relative minors and relative majors and stuff like that, parallel minors, parallel majors. Um, know how many sharps and flats are in those key signatures. Just know your circle of fifths. Um, you know, know what notes make up a certain scale, um, and know how to modify those scales to get different um, sounds. Like take a natural minor scale and um, raise the seventh degree to get a harmonic minor scale. 
If you want a melodic minor scale, raise the sixth and seventh degree of that minor scale, natural minor scale. Um, you know, learn your diminished arpeggio, which is really just one, you know. Um, you have whole half diminished and half whole diminished, but honestly, it's the same exact arpeggio. It's just depending on how you start it. So, um, you know, learn about augmented. Um, learn about, uh, you know, your major arpeggios, practice your minor arpeggios. And this comes back to fundamentals as well. Um, but practical theory is just, it's music theory to me. There are so many people when I was in music school that would get so caught up in music theory and whatever. Now, here's my take, hot take on music theory. I love it to death, love it to death. I study it all the time. But the thing is, is it's just a tool. You know, like I personally, I never set out, I sit in my computer um, and I, my surface over there with my MIDI keyboard, I'm not sitting there saying, okay, this piece is going to be in G major and it's going to modulate over here to B flat minor at this specific time. And it's going to be in B flat minor. It's going to be in there for a few measures and then I'm going to modulate to C major. Nobody does that. I mean, nobody, I don't. So what you do is you play what, what you're feeling, play out of your heart and soul and then use music theory as a tool like a screwdriver or a hammer for whatever job and figure out what you just played so you can communicate it to other musicians. That is what music theory is for. It's not to show off. It's not a badge of honor. You know, don't let anybody put you down if you don't know what the hell they're talking about. Ask them. You know, it's like, hey, what do you, what do, what do you mean by an E flat major uh, with a you know flat five or whatever? Yeah, I just ran an example or a uh, uh, an A thirteen flat five yeah i'm just making up a uh <laughs> or what can you explain to me what a c dominant seven chord is you know what i mean just ask them um so music theory is something that shouldn't be you shouldn't be intimidated by it don't be intimidated uh keep it simple it's just a tool to help you explain what you've made to yourself or to others you know and um so that's that's really what it's for is to understand what's happening it's the the workings under the hood of the musical engine uh, jamming with others. I have that written here. You know, of course, we're in challenging times with the whole thing going on. Um, so that might be a little difficult, but I mean, there's there's always ways to do that online um, or just, you know, hanging out with buddies if you feel comfortable doing that right now. Uh, very, very important because you get more musical insights from other players as well. Um, I also have writing on here. Writing is very important. Nowadays, I'm going to be honest with you guys, I, I feel terrible for saying this, but I don't practice much. I'm not saying that's a good thing or a bad thing or that I'm better than anybody because I'm surely not. Uh, but no, I just, once you, see there are some players who practice to practice. Some people are professional students and other people actually have something to say with their skills. And that's where you got to ask yourself. I mean, I almost fell into that category of just practicing to practice. I'm like, what the hell am I practicing? What am I doing if I'm not going to use this in a song or whatever, you know? It's really easy to get stuck in technique land and not really say anything or write. And I mean, if you don't want to write music and you just want to play guitar to noodle around, totally fine. But if you're trying to actually compose music um, in a, any variety of ways that you choose, it's important to use the fundamentals that we talked about earlier, and it's important to use that practical theory and all the improv experience that you've gained to write something meaningful that makes people feel something, yeah, if that's your goal, you know? So um, try not to just practice to practice, you know, try to uh, actually get in there and write some music, you know, write some lyrics, you know, it could be really simple, just a melody over some backing chords or whatever. Um, if you compose in finale like I do, um, you know, give yourself a few chords on your MIDI controller or your keyboard or whatever, and then just write a nice little sounding melody over the top, you know, and you'll never, you never know what it can turn into. Um, you know, when a tree fell on our house back in 2013, we got displaced. I was living in a hotel with my family for about eight months. And, um, I wrote one of my favorite pieces I ever wrote called Remembrance in finale 2011. And uh, I still have that piece. It's like 36 pages long. It's written for like three electric guitars, a drum set, vocals, synthesizer, and a couple other other things I, for, I forget now. But um, I love that piece so much. And the best part is it's not even done yet. I still work on that piece till this day, and I really enjoy it. So um, writing is huge. You know, I have something to say. 
Uh, don't get caught up in practice land. You know what I mean? Don't don't get caught up in technique land. Uh, now, here's something that you might be uncomfortable with. I'm going to be honest with you. Teaching, okay? I wrote that down. I totally get it. I see that and I'm just like, okay, people who just start, you might not want to teach if you're not really comfortable. You know, that's okay. Imposter syndrome is real, folks. It is, trust me. When I first started teaching guitar way back in the day, probably... Um, probably 12 years ago, uh, I felt like an imposter because I'm like, how the hell am I going to teach anybody else if I'm still learning? But that's false. Don't believe that. Everybody has, you can learn something from everybody. Everybody has something to share. Okay. And that includes you too. So don't forget that. Even if you're just starting out, even if you've been playing for a few months, you can still pass something on to somebody else who's brand new. You know what I mean? We all have something to share. And you too can help others by passing on the knowledge. So don't write yourself off. Teaching is also a fantastic way to keep yourself accountable for the knowledge that you have. Uh, I can speak from that uh, point personally. Um, it really uh, reinforces everything you know in your own mind about music theory, about improv, about everything we talked about, fundamentals. Um, and it really keeps yourself accountable, like we said, because you're saying you're like, okay, I really got to get this information straight if I'm going to share it with somebody else. You know what I mean? So there's an accountability there, and it's infectious because you might see some of those students that you have become teachers themselves. Uh, and lastly, this one's pretty easy. Listen to music. That's huge, huge. You'd be amazed by how many people actually. Uh, don't listen to a lot of music. Uh, try to have an open mind. You know, like you'll find the more music you absorb and listen to, it'll start coming out of you and you're playing, and you'll start creating more interesting phrases out of all the sounds that you've accumulated in your in your head. Uh, you know, as musically sensitive people, you know, you store those emotions of how that made you feel, that track, that lick, that riff, that rhythm. You know, those vocals, that melody. And you store that and when you start storing all that stuff in your brain then when you're when it comes time to playing and writing you're starting to pull all those pieces out of your brain together and piece them together to create something new you know because emotional memories are very very hard to forget that's how our amygdala inside of our brain remembers things you know it's like uh, was that a painful memory should i learn to avoid that thing if that dog is going to bite me when i get close you know, or was that dog friendly when I got close? You know, that might determine whether or not you're afraid of dogs, you know. So the same thing. If a song doesn't make you feel very good, you know, if you're like, ooh, that doesn't, I don't like the compression on those vocals, or I don't really like how, you know, this track is mastered, the snare drum sounds crazy, uh, sounds bad, you might not be compelled to remember much of that track. But you'll, you know what I'm talking about. When you really, like, feel a track, you know what I mean, like in your heart and soul, it sticks with you and uh, it might ooze out of you and you're playing. Not exactly verbatim, obviously that's you know, plagiarism, but you're gonna do your own thing with that um, based on the feeling that it gave you. So listen to music. Music, you are what you eat, you are what you listen to. So um, you know, always remember that and um, listen to as much music as you can and keep practicing those fundamentals. I have plenty of videos available here on the channel and uh, I hope everything goes well. Guys, if you want to support me further on this channel, I have a new book called Zeitgeist. It's a science fiction story. It takes place in the year 8086, and it chronicles a family that is displaced from their home based on a giant terrorist takeover of their small colony planet, Zynos. Uh, you can find the book in uh, the description below. Uh, if you guys want to check that out, thank you so much. And um, you know, keep playing, keep practicing. And uh, if anybody has any questions, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, I'm just happy to help anybody I can. We're all in this together. Uh, rock on. If you don't know who Randy Rhodes is, check him out. He's my fave. I love him to death. And he lives on in spirit and all of our hearts and souls. So uh, until next time, guys. Sayonara.